Okay, so I have that set up. So the next step is let's see how we can work with the, uh, the, for the force field. So the force field settings are actually built into the attributes of the end rigid object. Uh, so I don't need to create any additional fields or anything like that. Select the polygon plane and open up the attribute editor. And I need to be in the end rigid shape one node. And I'm going to scroll down here to force field generation and I'm going to set force field to single sided. So that means the force field is just being emitted from one side of the plane and it's the side of the plane where the normals are coming up. So let me uh, move this off to the side for a moment. If I rewind and play the scene, you'll see the end particles fall and they kind of bounce a little bit. So let's take a look at how we can edit the field so it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. You can actually see that they're kind of floating above the field now and they're bouncing just a little bit. So if I increase the field distance to say something like three, you'll see the end particles are now rising. And I'm going to actually increase the strength, the field magnitude. As I increase the magnitude of the field, you can see how they rise even more because more force is being applied to the, to the end particles. So the maximum amount that they'll rise, well, they'll do a little bit of bouncing of course, but once they settle, they're going to settle at a distance of three units above the plane. And uh, as I manipulate the the uh, force field magnitude, you can see that they, uh, they rise a bit more forcefully. If I set the field magnitude to a negative value, something like minus three, they actually get sucked down to the plane. And you can sort of see this, it's a little bit more obvious. I mean, I have gravity on in the scene, so it's hard to tell. Is it the gravity or is it the field magnitude that's actually causing them to uh, be sucked down to the plane? Obviously, it's a little bit of both. But what I can do is I'm going to rewind the scene and just tilt the plane a little bit and move it down. And you'll sort of see how a negative value actually sucks them to the plane. So again, field magnitude is minus 3. If I rewind and play the scene, you can see how they get, kind of get sucked to the plane. If I start to raise the field magnitude towards zero, eventually they're just going to roll off the plane altogether. And if I put them in positive value, they'll actually be repelled by the plane. So you get the idea. Negative values attract the end particles, positive values repel the end particles. And that's going to be more important as we uh, go ahead and start working with textures. If we're going to rewind the scene get this out of the way for the moment and reset my position and rotation of my plane. So at this point I can start uh, working with the texture and what I like to do is I like to um, apply the texture to a shader that's connected to the object just so I can more easily visualize exactly what's going on. So I've got the plane selected, I'll right click over it and I'll choose assign new material and just create a Lambert Texture. So this is a Lambert texture that's applied to the plane. In the attribute editor for the Lambert texture, I'm going to click on the little checker box next to color, and this uh, brings up the create render node window. And I'm going to choose a 2D texture fractal. 3D textures such as um, volume noise and solid fractal actually don't work with the force field. You have to use you need to use uh, 2D textures, so that's why I'm choosing the fractal. So if we take a look in the scene, you can see here is the fractal texture is applied, and I'm going to set the renderer to high quality rendering just so we can see a little bit better, so that it updates properly. I'm going to edit the texture a little bit um, just to make things a little bit clearer. Um, and to do this, I'm going to actually set the bias to 1. and the ratio to zero. And we end up with this sort of black and white kind of camo looking thing. But it should be obvious now what parts of the texture are influencing the force field. 